other than of course the common things as well so you should be able to see about the trachea the clavicle and also the different areas of the heart in this sense so you will be able to appreciate for example there's a breast or mammary shadow as well stomach uh, bubble over here there's apex of the heart okay left pulmonary artery the knob of aortic arch Okay. Then there is a phenomenon as well, something like unfolding of aorta, the pulmonary artery branches on the right side, and several other structures as well, which I had already commented before, in fact. So let's try to have a look in some uh, colorful pictures. Mostly x-rays are normally black and white, right? So what can we see? For example, this is the left atrium. This is the left atrial appendage then comes the right atrium and then comes the left ventricle and finally the right ventricle so one has to keep it always in mind because a lot of times not just for the x-rays in fact for when someone is doing a procedure in the ep or even in the interna interventional cardiology one should keep it in mind you know where are those structures and similarly on the now coming to our favorite lateral view so as I was telling, trachea is there, right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, okay, the aortic arch branches. So one of the common signs is called a Silhauta sign. So what is Silhauta sign? So this is the cardiac Silhauta. It's said. So cardiac Silhauta sign is made up of, so as you can see it clearly, these are the different structures. So going along is the great vessels, past and aortic arch, main pulmonary artery, left atrium, auricle, the left ventricle, then the, over here is the IVC, RA, SVC. These are the structures and of course the lobes as well, you can already make it out as well. The other concept which is very important is called as cardiothoracic ratio. Cardiothoracic ratio is taken mostly in PA view only. So what you try to do is you try to draw a line from a midline and you try to take uh, measure the distance on the right side, left side and try to divide them and how much is it. So normal CT ratio is less than 0.5. So the other rule which I learned, especially in my medicine days, was um, uh, I'm trying to make it easier. Uh, how shall I say? So you should try to first of all make your fist in front of the X-ray, then point out the index finger and the little finger. If the heart is going to come between that, most commonly it is normal CT ratio. Okay, the whole heart if it comes between the index finger and the little finger it will be normal if it is going beyond that chances are high that there may be cardiomegaly but as i said it this is a simplification this is like a mnemonic as i said it i always share those shortcut tools for the students so that's what it is okay so now coming to the diaphragm so the diaphragm you may already notice that the right side is higher than the left side and what happens is uh, then the, the, uh, that this is where it comes is the left costophrenic angle and the right costophrenic angle as well over here. And for example, over here comes the hila. So hila is the trachea, will be going into the pulmonary artery branches on the left side, on the right side, and then you will be able to notice. Then after that, one of the important things is uh, we all have to think like what about the uh, dimension of the mediastinum is it whitened or uh, yeah so for example if it is uh, the this is the area of mediastinum which i was telling you so if it is going to be more than six centimeter on the erect view or more than eight on a supine hmm, mediastinum is definitely widened however you may be able to notice different masses as well in the uh, superior region, posterior region, or even the middle region. So, for example, in the superior region, you see in cases of thyroid, thymus, uh, lymphomas, teratomas. Okay, in the middle ones, in conditions as lymphadenopathy, aortic aneurysm, pericardial cysts, dilated esophagus, or hiatus hernia as well. 
However, in the posterior side, you see in terms of neurogenic tumors or even the spinal masses as well. So something we call it in radiology is like the hidden areas. In hidden areas, what happens is um, it's not always so clear. So what are those hidden areas? So in terms of apex, what happens is because there are ribs which are going to obscure them. So that is why it is slightly hidden. Then comes around the cardiac shadows. Because what is happening is um, it is hiding portions of the lung as well. And also for the lung, which is lung area, which is posterior to the diaphragm. Because they are the ones which is hidden by the liver, stomach and spleen. So these are the hidden areas you should try, especially um, not to miss whenever you are seeing a patient. So that's why it is becoming very, very important a lot of times. As I said it, so to summarize, so this is how is the inside out approach. As I had already said it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. A, B, C, D, E, H. So can one recall what did I mean by that? So airway, bones, cardiac shadow, D for diaphragm, E for effusion, F for fields of lung, G for gastric bubble, H for hyla. So you all can repeat just with me. So it will be easier for you to remember for life, in fact. Okay. So the what is the unique approach? How do you interpret the chest x-ray? A for? Everyone is sleeping already in the lecture, is it? A for airway. B for bone. C, C for cardiac shadow. D for the diaphragm. E for effusion. F for lung fields. G for the gastric, H for the hela and mediastinum. Okay.